Yeah. One more, one more. All right. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Death. All the way from Vermont. What up, Death? I always wanted to say hello to Death, but in, in a more friendly way. So in the studio from left, we have uh, maybe you guys just introduce yourselves and what you and what you play in in Death. And okay, well, Jeff, you know you, you, we are by way of Vermont. You, you know, Death originally comes from Detroit, Michigan. Yeah, yeah. So we always have to uh, acknowledge our Motor City, Detroit, the home of Death. I'm Bobby Hackney. I'm the bassist and I'm the lead vocalist for the band called Death. I'm Dennis Hackney, I'm the drummer, and I do background vocals sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Bobby Duncan, I'm the guitarist, and I'm vocalist as well. Fantastic. You guys came down, did you drive down from Vermont today? Yes, well, yesterday. Yesterday. We, beautiful drive. I mean, just coming into uh, Brooklyn and seeing that beautiful skyline, man, it's just at nighttime, it's nothing like it. Yeah, we moved uh, from Detroit in 1977, you know, that was originally myself, my brother Dennis, and my brother David, who was the mentor and founder of, of the band Death. And, uh, you know, I mean, up to the time that uh, Death transitioned into another band, um, David got homesick for Detroit, you know, to make a long story short, and uh, kind of left me and Dennis there, you know, as a bass and drum section. and. Uh, you know, we, uh, through our association with the local musicians and local promoters, we gravitated to reggae music. I was gonna and say, you're we, left we were exiled in reggae music yeah. for about <laughs> maybe 15 years, you know? Yeah. If you're left with bass and drums, what else do you do besides start a reggae band? Well, that was it. You know, we were introduced to the Beatles by our dad on that magical weekend when it was like the whole country it was a, the electricity was in the air when the Beatles came, you know, for their first appearance on the Ed Sullivan show. And yeah. my dad was kind of always tuned in to historic moments. So he made us sit down and watch that. He told us, he says, I want you boys to sit down here. You're about to watch history being made. Because everybody in America, I mean, whether you tuned in to music or not, you knew that something was happening and it was going to be on Ed Sullivan oh, yeah. that Sunday night. And my dad only and, said uh, that about three people. Yeah. It was the Beatles, Martin Luther King, and John Kennedy. Yeah. Were you guys aware of other Detroit bands? Were you aware of MC5? Were you oh, aware of the Stooges? Oh, definitely. Definitely. Oh, See, David that was, was on his bicycle constantly. Uh, Wait, who was on their bike? David. Okay. Yeah. Uh, my brother, and he was constantly keeping up with the concerts in, on Bell Isle, uh, the concerts downtown. Uh, uh, he was at the rally. Right, the, the Johnson Clare rally. rally. Oh, wow. Yeah. But he was a little kid on a bicycle. <laughs> yeah, and he made it out of Bell Isle just in time before the National Guard came and, and, and disrupted everything. But, uh, but uh, uh, yeah, I remember that. And that was in 19, that was the 67. 70, yeah, it was 67. Oh, wow. Yeah, and, and the MC5 was doing a, a concert on Bell Isle. And, uh, I mean, you know, so David was always in and out of all those things. I mean, you know. I mean, David could get around Detroit on the Stingway more than a lot of people could in a car. So they dropped us off of their roster. And, but the one thing that David did defiantly, David went back and got all of our master tapes. And, said, and they agreed. They said, well, we're not going to do anything with this music, so we don't see it going anywhere, so we'll, we'll just give it back to you guys. So we decided to release a single off of those tapes that we had, and that's where the single came from in 1976. And it was on your own record label? It was on our own little record label, Triangle Records, because we at, the, at the time, our concept was try every angle. I mean, what do we got left? What we, so even the spelling on that was, was, was unique. It was instead of T-R-I, like a triangle, it was T-R-Y, because we were literally trying every angle we could to get our music out to the public. Coming up to Vermont uh, was pretty much a family decision for myself. Yeah. And um, being up there for a while, not doing any music, just pretty much writing and stuff, because I was always doing a lot of writing and producing down here in New York, just where I'm from originally. And uh, my wife pretty much met Bob's wife. And between that connection, my wife told me to go down to the corner, because I would drive by the house every day. You know, and they're doing all this great music, and I didn't know it. <laughs> you know, until my wife said, go down there, and, you know, meet these guys, they're waiting to meet you. And so I went down and I played, and. We just hit it off automatically. Music, and we were looking for a reggae guitar player, and we was like, "Wow, we found the perfect guy!" Because Bobby just—I mean, he was just awesome, awesome guitar player. And 
We didn't know. I mean, it was about maybe a nine or ten months, months later, before yeah. the death uh, discovery even happened. I mean, we didn't even know ourselves. You know, we got a call. I got a call from my son who had taken decided to take a year off college, and he was traveling around, and he was in uh, San Francisco. So he calls me up one day and he says, Dad, do you realize that they're playing your underground music? I mean, your, your music at underground parties here and people are going crazy over it. And I said, you mean our Lansbred stuff? <laughs> and he said, no. He says, Dad, you were in a band in Detroit in the 70s. <laughs> and as soon as he said that, my jaw dropped to the ground because when he said you were in a band in Detroit in the 70s, I mean, death is the only thing I can think of. <laughs> and so, you know, that was really really the beginning of this whole discovery. Uh, uh, it was just totally amazing. Um, and then my son Bobby did a Google search and uh, he said, Dad, he told me, he says, please tell me you have all those master tapes from uh, the 70s on death. And, I, and just as nonchalantly as, as I would tell him to go out and mow the lawn, I said, uh, sure, they're up there in the attic. And he just I mean, screamed over the phone like he was like, Dad, we got a lot of work to do. And, wow. you know, and it was just amazing. Yeah, you know, I mean, the next thing I know, we're getting calls from people in Chicago and in L.A. and in New York. And, you know, and they're telling us that we predated the punk sound uh, by about six years. And I'm like, you know, <laughs> by this time, me and Dennis were kind of like deer, deer in the headlights. That's an old Vermont saying, folks. Back you know. then, if you call them <laughs>